Yo, what's good, YouTube? So, in today's tutorial, I actually thought we can take the project that we already did and try to see if we can make it more interesting and work upon it instead of starting a whole new look. I believe the first one wasn't that great looking, so we could probably just um, start adding some new techniques. I believe this should be a bit more advanced, and uh, if you guys want to keep following along, uh, the project file should be in the description below. But other than that, let's uh, continue. So, like I said, uh, this project file should look just like this when you open it. Um, basically, I want to add on top of what's happening already here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off these instances since we're only going to be working with the actual geometry instead of the references. So, let's turn those off. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and pair those and call them instances. Okay, so you'll notice really quick that uh, this is kind of dark and like the lights are actually affecting the scene. Uh, one thing that I like to do in order for this to like become a, a blank uh, canvas again is I come here into the lights and you can, you can, okay, since they're already paired, you can go into this little circle right here, double click that and boom, the lights are no longer in the scene. And if you need them again, you click it again. They should be there. But just for uh, just so we could see what's going on, I'm gonna turn those off again. So the very very first thing that I want to do, I want to show you guys something cool that I that I've been using in my visuals for a while now, is actually like creating a small river here that could add a little bit more dynamic uh, to the scene. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this lower than the sides of the actual plane, and that's where we're gonna insert our river. Um, the way of doing that is we will go to our plane, which should be under full, called floor. And just to, uh, just thinking ahead, I'm going to give this floor a bit more segments. So go down to the segments and I believe a hundred should be okay. Uh, if we need more, we can switch that up later. Um, since we're not really working with textures right now and uh, this is getting kind of noisy you can go down to options and then under textures here just turn those off temporarily so we can see way better what's happening here oh one thing I, I forgot to mention and I'm, I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up later is that um, I added these little small particles I don't know if you could see them in the actual render I mean in the actual window but here they are right here and uh, that's controlled by this cloner here so I'll show you guys how to set that up uh, once we get this this going on so I just click that off and you should be good to go right here okay so on my floor we have 100 segments by 100 segments uh, if you guys actually want to see the segments like I said it could get noisy depending on how many segments you have in this in the actual scene but uh, if you go to filter, no, options, I believe, or dis yeah, display, under display, you go to, um, I don't know how that word's pronounced, Goraud shading, and they go to shading lines, and you'll notice that the actual segments are actually popping up now. So we'll keep that on for now. If it gets too noisy, we can turn that off again by just going to display, and then going back to guarding, guarding shading. I don't know how you said that, like I said. Uh, let's turn those back on okay so under floor we're gonna go under this panel right here under the bend and then we're gonna go to displacer click the displacer it's gonna be at the top I believe there's a shortcut to just drag it right into it directly um, you can look that up somewhere else so for now let's put it under floor make sure to put it under floor and then uh, under floor, I usually use, here on the type, I usually use intensity, the regular one instead of the centered. Then go to shading. In this shading uh, tab, you're gonna want to go down to this click down menu and then click gradient. And you'll, uh, you'll notice really quickly that, um, especially if we go to object first and then crank this up to maybe like 50 just to see what's going on. You'll see that one side is like lifting up and the other isn't. And that's exactly what we want but we want this right down the middle so let's go to shading 
And uh, under this gradient, what we're going to want to do is is uh, actually control where this uh, parting is going to happen. And I believe if you just drag this, you'll start seeing some um, some updates. So anything that's white will be more elevated, and anything that's black will be uh, not elevated at all. And uh, there you can use like gradients of grays to like just elevate it a bit more or less. So since the black is right in the middle, we want another white one on the side. So what you could do is just um, double click here, and then it's by default it's going to be black. Drag it all the way to white, and boom, you should have a small concave here. Uh, let's let me turn these walls off just so we can see way better. Yeah, that totally works way better. Okay, on the displacer. We're gonna go back to it in the gradient, and uh, this is where you can kind of like um, get creative with this. If you don't know how to use this yet, I recommend you guys like play along, play with these uh, settings and whatnot. Uh, right click here, and you can actually distribute knots so they're actually equal, equally aligned here. Under turbulence, you could actually add like some geometry, so you'll start noticing really quickly that. Uh, the actual plane is starting to take a bit more form. Uh, we're not going to do too much of that, so let's do let's do five just to just to add a little bit of uh, variety here. Um, another thing that you could do is you could actually crush these whites so it'll be more apparent, and that's what we actually want to do because we want the river to like actually show instead of it being just gradually uh, making a slope here. So let's go ahead and put this white all the way. Uh, around here that'll be fine and then let's grab this one and put it around here yeah that should work uh, again you could also go into object and increase this or decrease whichever way you could even invert it by doing this you see that so I say let's do 65 of course like a uh, since this is a uh, displacing upward we're probably gonna have to bring this down the actual floor bring it down so we'll see right now really quickly what what effect is happening with the displacer here. So yeah, we're going to definitely want to bring this just a bit down. Um, once we get the other instances in, we'll see if that uh, affects how this looks. Cool. So uh, remember, we have flowers going on here the way we left it last time. What I want to do actually is uh, only have flowers happening on the sides. Let's turn the walls off again. We only want the flowers to be happening on the sides right here, uh, left side and right side. We don't want them here because that, that doesn't really make sense. Uh, you guys could go ahead and leave them there like that, but this is a great time to show you guys how to do that. Um, so in the floor, what we're going to do is actually turn this into an uh, edit editable object. Like I said, you press C or you click this button right here. Make sure it's selected. And you'll see we have a floor controlled with a displacer okay so in here we can now use the polygon selection tool and you'll see like once we click that it, the displacer won't be turned on but uh as soon as we click out of it or click another object it'll be right back okay so under floor what we want to do um oops let me bring that back uh selection tool to make this a bit bigger I believe if you click the middle uh, scrolling mouse wheel in and then you like uh, what's it called move the mouse up and down it'll give you different sizes I, I it took me a while to figure that out but uh, I, I found it out on accident so that's kind of funny okay so let's um, what do we want to do what do we want to do so we don't want this this right here so let's just um, let's just you know very roughly select this right here. Doesn't have to be like perfect. Uh, if you guys want to do it perfect, I mean, uh, by all means, go ahead. Uh, once you selected this, what you want to do is go to select, and then go to set vertex weight. Click OK. Uh, then it's gonna give you this tag right here on your floor. You're gonna want to double click that. Um, and then under uh, yeah under options you apply selected 
But uh, the the problem with this is that right now, since we selected just the middle, it's gonna uh, the way we're doing this, it's gonna actually put the flowers in the middle, and we don't want that. We want it on the opposite. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a uh, step backward, go back to life selection tool, and then when you click uh, and then we have this selected, you can go to select, and then click invert, and you'll notice that um, this is no longer selected. So now we can go back to this tag right here and then uh, double click it and under options you could choose apply selected and you'll see that these values are selected now. So this is basically just a mapping that we're going to use to drive the actual octane scatter to tell where the flowers should be and where they shouldn't be. So under flower, uh, the, the, the octane scatter flower we can now go down to this option called vertex map and that's exactly where we're going to plug this icon right here this vertex map tag we're just going to directly plug it into here and you'll notice uh immediately that we're getting that um the desire that we wanted the the, the thing that we wanted to do with this um you could actually go down to this limit and press one i believe it just goes to one yeah you press one and it'll like make sure that everywhere where this uh, vertex map is red there will be absolutely no uh, plants at all if you bring it down to zero there's like sometimes one could poke in here and there it just depends on the on the limit of like how how limited you want it to be so that's cool so like I said we can't really see it until we set it up on the, the actual render but just trust me when you see these little lines being here and here but not in here that's exactly what we want to do okay so before we start moving on to the next part of the render uh, you could just click off anywhere and this will go back to normal okay let's put those walls right back cool so last time when uh, I was checking out the final render I noticed that these walls and the, and the roof was actually pretty boring uh, and especially this uh, roof that I said that I wanted to fix it's just it just looks terrible so we're gonna go back to bridge quixel bridge like I explained uh, and I know they have like a uh, roof a rough as I say uh, asset uh, I think I could just I think it's ceiling ceiling I think under ceiling it should pop up yeah see here it is I don't have a download so I'm gonna download it really quickly this is kind of cool because it has like um, like bars that, that you could shine light into if you guys wanted to do that. It, it can add some really cool effects as far as lighting is concerned. Uh, so we have this in here. Uh, you don't have to be perfect, but we're going to roughly bring it up there to where it should be at. And then we can rotate this by pressing R. And then uh, holding shift down, it'll just go into increments like we explained earlier. And then uh, just just align it. Uh, luckily, this um, asset pretty much fits that hole perfectly. And now, like I said, it's just a personal pre personal preference. But uh, this, I think, this is going to add a lot to it. Uh, one other thing I wanted to do was uh, instead of there just being flowers down here, I kind of wanted to add grass. Uh, so we're going to go back to the assets, uh, go to 3D plants, and we're going to go to my grass assets. Uh, let's use, let's use a very green, yeah, let's use these. These look pretty cool too. Okay, let's export these. And then you could, you could technically just uh, click and drag these right into the flower octane um, scatter but I actually want to make a separate one so we have uh, better control of where the grass goes and whatnot so um, actually to save time let's not create a completely um, new octane scatter let's just use the actual one that's already set up so let's uh, I have the window key set to uh, duplicate. I'm not sure if you guys have it in a different format, but uh, you want to just duplicate this. 
and it's gonna have all the flower assets in it we're gonna go ahead and just delete those I just remember it's flower one so we're gonna call this grass so we don't get that confused uh, grab all our assets that are grass and then bring them into there and this is cool because uh, since we just uh, duplicated it it should be in the same spot with all the settings and everything uh, even the mapping should be correctly correctly placed so right here uh, there's a seed let's just make sure that it's uh, different than the actual flower you could turn off the flower and then see that the grass is actually happening here uh, once we boot up the octane we can uh, adjust the settings and whatnot with this uh, remember the grass also has the effector turned on for the flower I believe we have it right here the random no this is for the cloner sorry there, there it is our flower let's call this the particle this is the particle randomness that I'll show you guys how to set up soon okay so this also has the effector in there so you can actually delete that or, or even duplicate this and then add another you know layer to the randomness of, of your grass but for now uh, once we boot up the actual um, render we'll see what we can do with that flat with the grass and all that uh, I actually thought that it could be pretty interesting to add grass and flowers to the top of the roof as well so how about we go ahead and do that let's just grab both of these and duplicate them again if you're going to if you're going to do something like this make sure that the count which means you know how many flowers and grass instances there's going to be in your scene isn't too high or else you know once we start duplicating these into the instances your machine might slow down or like octane will just not work all together uh, especially depending on your gpu like how much uh, video ram you guys have uh, these are things to to be careful with because you don't want to overload your system so under flower and grass let's uh how about we just just for just for um just for organization organization sakes we'll group these and call this the rough um vegetation or something and then the ones at the bottom we'll just call them floor vegetation so on the roof rough vegetation uh, we now need to switch the surface to use this roof and boom we also need the flower to be the roof right here on the surface you'll notice that the actual grass and all that is is um, pointing upwards and there's a couple things we could do we could technically just uh, rotate these downward but I actually think that if we grab our roof and you see how like the this arrow is pointing upward I think if we just simply 180 it like this on the y-axis that should pretty much solve our problems we don't have to worry about aligning these and all that cool so we just got to remember that uh, once we set up this uh, render that if uh, this doesn't look good or this doesn't look good that we have to mess with the scatters on both the roof vegetation and the floor vegetation okay so just one like two more things that I'm thinking of is uh, these walls like I said they were kind of boring and uh, let's just practice using the MoGraph cloner to like add a little variety so uh, just go to MoGraph cloner or call these uh, wall spheres and this is pretty abstract this is a um, you probably wouldn't do this in your render it's pretty random but uh, I would you we'll see how this looks um, let's grab a sphere and then let's create a new um, glossy material for octane I believe in the window and octane live viewer which I have down here you go to objects no materials create and then glossy material should be right there cool so we're gonna go into our material and then we're, we're just gonna use a straight glossy sphere that's all we're gonna use so click and drag that into our sphere 
under under these segments and whatnot i like to use 36 just because it it gives it more segments to work with and it doesn't look so wonky specifically if you go to like four you'll see that it starts becoming like primal geometry 36 is good you don't want to crank this up too high either because like i said we're going to duplicate these and resources are very valuable especially in 3d um let's go ahead and leave it at 36 and let's do let's do like 15 that way it'll be kind of small click and drag the sphere into the wall spheres and then under linear we're going to go to object um under object we want these two walls i think the two walls would look cool to be like contaminated with these spheres just so we could see them so it's these two cubes right here so we could actually like instead of having to put our wall spheres on each one of these make a different mograph we could actually just um click these two right click and then go down to connect objects plus delete and what that'll do is it'll, it'll make another object in its place that is now just one piece in its own and i'll show you right now what i mean so see now it's they're both connected and it's just one piece so instead of having to like make a mograph uh, cloner for each one we can now just grab this cube right here we'll call this front wall we can now just grab this front wall into our cloner object right here under object and you'll actually see these update in real time right here and like I said the count let's crank that up to like let's not go too crazy but maybe 55 that looks that looks pretty gross right here so you could mess with the seed right here so you could kind of get like a different look Yeah, that works it just all depends on you know your artistic eye and what you guys like think looks good and whatnot unfortunately these are down here just wasting resources but uh let's just continue from there i'm just banking on the fact that i hope this looks good if it doesn't look good uh we're gonna have to make a part three because uh i want to make it look good so it, it'll be worth like putting the effort to like do something like this in the future again um so these are wall spheres. Okay, so I want to take it a step further and I want to show you guys how we can animate these spheres in scale where they're like kind of throbbing, but they're also going to loop because that's the important part. If you're going to do animations in the loops, you have to think about like, is it going to loop? Is the animation going to loop? You got to think about the first frame and the last frame of your loop. Will it be exactly the same or close enough to where it could sell the, the, the seamless loop? Uh, because if you animate these spheres in a way where they don't loop, you're going to get these jump cuts. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to how to do this. And it's it's actually pretty simple, pretty genius. Uh, I don't remember where I got this from. Uh, most of my work comes from tutorials. So credit to all those tutorials out there. This is why I'm trying to like give back to the community by making tutorials of stuff that I've like learned over the years. So let's 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 do that now let's uh, do I believe MoGraph effector and then under shader I mean uh, under effector you go down to shader click shader and uh, that should apply directly to the to the actual wall spheres uh, go to shader and by default it's gonna have a scale of 0.5 you could do one which will like make this the, the spheres way bigger and for for now the way it's set up is it's just going to scale these uh spheres by one so we don't want them to get too big so one way we can do that is by going back to the spheres and bringing the size of these a bit more down so like let's do 10. so these spheres will actually uh won't get too big uh, you can turn that off and you'll see how big they, they will get that's pretty much the limit of how big they will get uh, for right now, if you click play, it's not going to do anything. So the way we actually get to control these and animate them is by going to the shading tab. And then under shader, you go to noise. And then the the one that I used 
most commonly commonly is under noise. You go to noise, and then you go to fire. Uh, down here is where you're gonna you're gonna set up your loop period. Going down to low clip, going to the first frame, putting a keyframe there. Going to the last frame, putting a keyframe there, and then let's go to 50. And then on the low clip, let's just crank this up to 100. How about let's try that? Now you'll notice that the that the animation is happening on certain certain circles here, certain spheres. You can also switch to seed here, and this won't actually mess with uh, your keyframes. Uh, this is kind of like this, a quick workaround of uh, what to do for a more seamless loop. So that's pretty. That's pretty subtle. Uh, you can definitely mess with like these glo global scale and like get uh, different looks. So that's pretty cool. So that kind of speeds up what's happening here. Yeah, I think you could go to yeah high clip. High clip would probably help too. So let's do that now. First frame zero, last frame hundred. Both of them at hundred. I'm sorry. And then go to fifty. Uh, let's bring this down to zero. Let's see what that does. <laughs> so it just jumps. Okay, let's not. Let's not mess with the high clip. So let's say we want to delete this. We could go to high clip and then go to animation, uh, delete track. And this should delete all the keyframes here. All right, cool. So we've got that going on. Um, I think that should be enough changes for now. Let's just add the water down here. That's really simple to do. Uh, we just add a plane down here. I believe our plane was 1500 by 1500. Yeah. Let's take these walls down so we can see a bit better. Uh, 250. 500. Yeah, fine. Bring it to 500 right here. And we don't need these segments since it's just water. Uh, let's actually drag, let's actually duplicate this uh, glossy material we used for the spheres. Uh, double click it and then just go down to, I believe, bump. And then under bump, we could use a noise. Under noise, I believe we could use a wavy turbulence. And then under texture, I believe we could use a 2D UV. Uh, I think that should and the under global scale to like make this like make the waves like uh, more drastic you go down a bit yeah see uh, let's then drag it onto our plane call it water and then drag this down to where it's just barely you see that that's gonna be our water and that's gonna be pretty cool okay uh, before we proceed let's Oh, let's show you really quick how I did these uh, particle cloners. I pretty much put a sphere. Okay, let's let me show you what I did. So I, I made a sphere, right? A very tiny sphere, just like we made that sphere earlier. Uh, segments three, uh, radius one. So this is just a sphere that's duplicated a bunch of times. In the cloner, it's a grid array six six six, and. Um, it's basically just in like uh it's in this space make sure that uh you put this in the same space that uh will be your loop so once you put it into the instance it will loop seamlessly once it gets duplicated um in the cloner i also did an effector that way uh the reason why these are kind of like scattered around is where is it at? this particle has a position of 500, 500, 500 on the Y and the X and the Z. So, uh, like I said, we turn that off. You'll see that's like a grid array. This is basically what happens when you put the cloner just regularly without the actual effector. Uh, but let's turn that back on. 
And that's pretty much it. I added the same, uh, just to save resource, I added the same rock texture to it. You can add whatever texture you want to it. A white one, black one, whatever color you guys want. Uh, let's set this up so it'll be duplicated correctly. So we have our roof, a whole gap thing, put it into the full. Uh, our wall spheres, we want to make sure we put that into the full. This is the this is the wall spheres. And the water as well, put it into the full. So we should have this. Uh, let's go ahead and turn back on the walls. Make sure that's good. And then let's go ahead and save this. This is what it should look like. Um, going to our camera. And uh, go to the first frame just so we can see what's going on here. I am going to take my cam off so we can use the so we can use that space for the octane render. Uh, here it is. Increase it a bit. Uh, so let's set that off so we can see what's going on here. Okay, cool. So you'll notice here that our uh, flowers weren't turned back on. I forgot to turn those back on. So let's drag this here and then go into our floor and rough vegetation and turn on these flowers. And you'll quickly notice that our actual scene is like completely different. And once we turn on these uh, new instances, once we turn on the instances, you'll notice that the scene completely changes. So let's start with just one instance. I believe this is the back instance. The one. Oh, no, no here we go. Uh, so let's click these all on. Um, let's see. Yeah, we clicked them all on. And look. Look how much different our scene has changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and render this out. Uh, we have it all set up, so it should just be click and render all over again. And I'm going to show you guys the full render once it's finished. And we will color correct all that all over again just to see what kind of different effects we could get with the same render. Uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, we're back in After Effects, and uh, the render took about 56 minutes for those 100 frames. Uh, your times may vary. Of course, you could bring it down, bring down the samples about like 250, and it'd probably be faster. Uh, it just depends on your machine. So let's go ahead and uh, import our EXRs like last time. I have them on the desktop, tutorial one. Uh, of course, make sure you have Open EXR sequence clicked. Uh, press import. And here we go, we have our full loop right here. Uh, we can go ahead and do the same steps that we did last time. Um, an adjustment layer, uh, layer, new, adjustment layer, or control alt y. Lumetric color, that's what I use, that's what we used last time. Basic correction. Uh, let's see contrast bring up the contrast let's do like 50 shadows let's bring up the shadows just a bit More like 30 uh, saturation I kind of like uh, how we did 150 last time that's looking super dope already uh, let's go ahead and preview this oh see that's so much cooler Hopefully it's seamless loops. Um, yeah, there it goes. Cool. I'm always worried like it's not gonna seamless loop, and then the whole tutorial kind of has to be redone. But uh, this works, and this looks so much more interesting than what we had the first time. I actually think we should just build upon this, maybe on the next tutorial, and do something with the walls. A little bit more extra stuff on the walls. Probably add some more lights. Uh, maybe move the plants, the flowers and all that. Uh, switch up the lighting. But for now, this is a really good spot for us to finish the tutorial. This tutorial. Um, 
like I said, thanks for watching, you guys. I hope to see you guys uh, soon with a new tutorial. Again, leave a comment. Uh, see what you guys uh, need some help with. Um, I'd love to keep doing these, and I hope uh, you guys learn something new from this. Um, yeah, if, as always, uh, if it's not good enough, keep making more, and I'll see you guys on the next one.